a lot of talk going around about drugs trafficking, drug mafia and children getting involved into the drugs abuse. When we think about children using this drug abuse, it's a very painful phenomena because a drug abuse is something which is a very horrible in the terms of health and the very horrible in terms of family and social uh, conditions. So we try to find out about what are the pickup points, carry home messages of what every parent should think about their child, if at all they have a doubt about my child is trying to go and do this or trying to do that. So if at all you have a suspicion about your child trying to go little away from the routine, here are the major points that we would love to share with you. After these points, we wish that every parent will benefit upon these points applicable practically into the day-to-day -day domestic atmospheres and watch your child where he is heading to. So coming to the first point very importantly is very often the child's demand for money increases. The child would come to the mother or the father and say, suppose I have got 100 rupees more, so I wanted to do this, that, I wanted 1000 rupees more, I want to go for a picnic, I want to go for buying of this, I want to go for a shopping, I want to go for an outing. You know, out of the blue, suddenly the boy comes out, the girl comes out, the kid comes out to the parents and starts asking this. And if at all you have any suspicion of it, immediately there is a necessity that you need to check up all these activities of increased financial uh, increased financial necessity of the kid with the principals or the parents or, or, or the teachers of their classes. This is very important. Next important uh, thing is an abnormal unusual behavior. Now this is very important. In school, suppose there is a class of 100 or say to a class of 50, now the child is sitting in the last bench and trying to see what is going on in the class. Now the situation will be like if suppose the kid is having an unfortunate drug use habitat, then what does he do? He sits in the last bench or some corner of the place where he gets delinked from the activity. Now the dealing with the activity means he gets alienated. Means what? That means he is delinked with what is happening in the class, his peer, his teacher's lecture and all these things. Now suppose a teacher pulls up a boy and asks, come on tell me what is that I am teaching the boy just stands up. There are two types of possible behavior. Either the boy can just come out with a very kind of a viral behavior, putting eye to eye contact to the teacher or the same situation can exist in the parent situation in house or the boy can just you know shrug off and feel very shy not to open up because the fear e here is if the boy speaks out he is afraid that the teacher or the parent will find out the changes in his behavior. So he tries to cover up either being too silent or try to be aggressive. <coughs> These two things are to be noted very importantly. And most importantly is a sluggish behavior in routine activities like you know uh, paying of the bills of the ATM or kind of you know mess bills or kind of you know taking a money from the ATM or paying to the kind of tuition fees and all these things you know uh, parents somehow try to give 100 200 300 to pay some kind of bills but he doesn't do that what does he do with that money he tries to go around try to spend around with the bad peer pressure he tries to go and utilize that money for the use of this drug now here is a condition where you need to monitor whether the money given to them is correctly paid to the bills or is being used in some other area. This is the primary responsibilities of the teachers and the parents unavoidably. You need to check. You can give the money but have a watch on what and where the money is going. And very importantly, if suppose if you have got a suspicion that your child is going to the school and ultimately you find him that there is some kind of change in his behavior, just hold on the kid and say, hi, hello, you are going to the school. Very nice. Have a very good day. Come on, shake a hand. You know, this is a very simple thing. It may be a very rare gesture. Every time you may not do it routinely. But the moment you give a shake hand, you know, the boy tries to avoid because a drug abuse or a drug addict will have a feeling of a kind of a tremor in his hand. You know, this is the first sign that you should understand why there is a tremor of this hand the boy is occurring and why he is trying to show that and is there any change. Now, you, when you try to ask a little more, he goes very shying or tries to run away. This is a simple thing that everyone should understand. Now, in the classroom scenario, 
when we come into a classroom scenario, even teacher can manage this, like pulling up a kid and you know trying to ask, trying to shake hand. Oh, you look smart. You're pretty good. Doing very good. The moment you give that kind of a gesture, the, if at all, if there's a suspect or anything, he tries to go back because he wants to avoid that tremor. And very importantly, you ask him to put his button on the shirt or something like your tie is not good or something like that, you know, he tries to avoid that. These are all the things that you should avoid. And very importantly is clothing, which is the important sign that we look into a drug addicts. Very often we, we have seen a drug addict, what happens is, you know, he takes up a change of a costume like you know all these days he was wearing a white shirt a half shirt and suddenly he comes to home and say papa i want a full shirt papa i don't want kind of this clothing i want a change in a clothing i don't want to go in a shot i want to go in a pant you know this kind of a sudden change of a clothing is the important sign we need to understand that why there is a demand of this and there's a sudden unprescribed demand by the teaching staff or the school administration because the boy wants to avoid any kind of marks seen on his hands because such a kind of drug abuse injectable drug abuse can be seen on his hand if at all he wears a half shirt this is a sign that every parent every teacher should take care of it because this is the first pickup that they we should we need to make up and coming importantly you know a very very common issue is sudden disinterest like you know the teacher asks come on let's go let's go to the playground and play out of 40 out of 50 students these kids who are slightly in a drug abuse condition they would like to be aloof you know they don't want to come for the ground they don't want to play they want to sit uh, aloof into the uh, corner of a class on something like that then you need to point out and ask why you are trying to sit here, why are not mingling with others? And yet another important thing is that the very important point is you give a watch to the kid, you love him, you give a sh beautiful shoes, you love him, you give a beautiful mobile if you want, you love him, but observe, are these articles which are very costly or the gadgets which are very costly adhering to your kid? Because the first thing what a kid does to get a drug or any kind of a narcotic or any kind of a health damaging uh, 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 drug is sell off his watch, sell off his shoes, sell off his gadgets. These are the very, very common things. You know, you need to check every month what happened to this, what happened to your shoes, what happened to your watch. And the teachers also need to, you know, put upon the focusing thing of where is your tiffin box? Oh, you had a wonderful tiffin box that time. Where is your tiffin box that costed around 2000, 3000? Where is it now? Oh, your watch was beautiful. Where is it now? You know, the parent need to ask, the teacher need to ask. This is very important. And most importantly, you see a change in the children's behavior pattern, the way they physically dress, you know, the boy is very pretty, comfortably trim and smart. Suddenly you find a change. He doesn't go to, you know, sh shaving or anything. He tries to grow the beard or, you know, he would look weird and try to go to the school without combing. And, you know, his shirts and other things are dirty. Now, this is the point where in-house and teachers need to identify this kid was all right all these years. What happened to him? I see a change in his clothing. I see a change in the behavior, the way he, the attire where he, where he wears. These are all the things that we need to understand that you know why this is happening a change now very importantly in the home and also again in the school atmosphere when the child when invited for a common gathering for simple example father mother sister or everyone in the hall is watching a movie watching a cricket match or watching a kind of a common entertainment the boy doesn't come out of his bedroom you know this is a very important thing you need to go back to his bedroom and ask why are you not coming why don't you join us he tries to be aloof no no i've got a work i will not come this is a sign that you need to be suspicious and try to work out on it even in the school there is a recreational activity there's a social activity the child doesn't come why is he not coming this is what we need to understand because they try to avoid the public gathering because they are afraid that they'll be caught or they'll be suspicious or they'll be laughed upon because you know the kind of a mind they have after using the drugs will make them alienate immediately segregate or isolate them among the peer group this is a very important thing that we need to understand and most importantly we call this presentism and absentism you know you go the kid goes to the school 
but he is not able to perform well, he is not able to you know deliver what he is expected to do. The teacher needs to monitor why this kid who was getting good marks, very having a very good percentage of attendance, suddenly there is a down of attendance, suddenly there is down of number of marks he is getting, the scores come down, the attendance comes down. This is not an abnormality, it is a point that you need to catch up the kid and ask not just an abnormality thinking that oh two months three months let me see no parents need to ask why he is not going teachers need to ask why does a steep down is an academic performance all these points perfectly match towards identifying the kids in a very early stage now if suppose we are going to do all these things we're going to keep our uh, children safe then I think I am sure that we would not have an embarrassing situation, you know, going around the police stations or putting the child into a, a juvenile protection force or something like that. I hope you will enjoy this video and try to implement it. Thank you so much.